When I first started painting with watercolors a little over a year ago, I owned one set of paints, this palette of small circular watercolor cakes. They were from a local craft store and cost about $10 at the time. I knew nothing about watercolors when I bought them, so the purchase was based on the selection of colors as well as the low price. I'm going to create a quick color chart for myself so I can give these paints the comparison they deserve. I'm not doing full color swatching, but just enough of each color to get an idea of where they stand next to the Windsor and Newton paints. Now I'll start by saying these cake paints worked great for me for about the first six months or so while I was just playing around, but around that time I was thinking about getting more serious about my art. I was finally ready to dedicate more time to improving my very limited skills. And so I purchased a set of 20 Windsor and Newton tube paints. I bought the Cotman paints, which are considered to be student grade. They also offer a line of professional paints, but the price point was a pretty big jump. The tubes are five milliliters, which I feel is a good amount to start with. This set generally seems to run from $35 to $45 on Amazon. This seemed like the next reasonable step from what I had been using, but was this upgrade necessary? As soon as my new paints arrived, I was so excited that I put my cake watercolors aside and never looked back. I had nearly forgotten all about them until last week when I was reorganizing my office and found them tucked away in a drawer. So, now that the paints from the past have resurfaced, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison and see if I was right to move on or if I should have saved my money. I think it's worth noting that the cakes win when it comes to color variety with almost double the amount of colors, 36 cake paints versus 20 of the Cotman paints. And once again, the price of the cakes was around $10 while the Cotman set was about 35 to 45. So the cakes also win in the price category if we're just talking dollar to dollar. I will include an Amazon link in the description if you'd like to check the current price. I don't know the actual colors of the cakes, so I've numbered them according to where they sit in the palette. For the Windsor, I do have a cheat sheet on the back that I use often as I'm still getting to know all of the colors by sight. I'm scanning both papers now looking for similar colors and it looks like four versus four should be a good match. 32 versus six. 28 versus eight. 15 versus 15, those two are pretty close. And how about 17 versus 13? This gives us five comparisons, quite close in color, at least at first glance. Let's begin with wet on wet. I'll be keeping the cakes on the left for each experiment and the Windsor and Newtons on the right. I'll do my best to use the same amount of water and paint on each side. I'll be speeding up the process to about one and a half times the speed so we can keep this video moving along. For the blue sky, we're using color number 28 versus number eight. I'm adding in the green grass below, number 32 versus number six overlapping some so that we can see the colors spread as well as how well they blend. You'll notice I'm dipping my brush directly into the paint so I can get the full effect of the colors. I'm already noticing a couple of differences. The sky on the left is a bit streaky while the right looks more uniform. Also looking at the point where the blue and green meet, we have some nice bleeding happening on the right, but on the left side, the sky and the grass have stayed somewhat separate. Now that our first layer is dry, I'm adding in some trees to see what kind of results we can get from wet on dry. 
I'm going to paint a total of three evergreens on each side, using a mix of green and purple for the first trees, then purple only, then green only. This should give us some good comparisons. These are definitely not colors I would normally use together, but we're just going with it since they were the closest matchups. And as I drop in these bits of purple, I'll try to ignore how much I really don't care for these colors together. While I was painting the first tree on the left, I noticed that it, the paint was drying very quickly and it was making it difficult to add in the drops of that second color. And I find that I was having to sort of move the paint along, helping it spread out since it wasn't spreading on its own. Now, as I'm working on the right, the paint is spreading like I want it to, but it's kind of bothering me how dark the tree is, not really allowing us to see the variations in color or value. So for the second tree, I'll try to use more water, especially on the left, which should result in better spreading. And when I get to the right, I'll try to keep my values lighter than the previous tree. Even with more water, I can already see that the paint is too dry to add in those extra drops of color. So we'll just have to wait for it to dry entirely and then come back in with a second layer. All right, and on to the purple, which was number 17 versus number 13. I will include timestamps in the description, so if you'd like to move ahead and just kind of see the final reveal at the end, then I totally understand. As I add in some grass with the number four paint color, there aren't any issues to note. The paint is going on the paper in a fairly smooth manner, and it's definitely noticeable over the green, so working on layers doesn't seem to be a problem with either paint. Let's add in a handful of flowers to each side. This will just take a minute here while I go in with a second layer and try to liven up these flat looking trees. This purple tree is looking pretty good, so I'm curious to see what's gonna happen when it dries. I hope it'll still have somewhat of a level of depth. Both papers are now dry, so let's see the final results. The left side does have a somewhat chalky appearance, and the colors have faded away quite a bit. I'm kind of disappointed that I wasn't able to create more depth by adding in that second layer. The colors on the right are definitely more saturated, and I do like the bleeding that we were able to get with the background when we painted wet on wet. Even on the right, my depth is lacking though, and I think it has something to do with how I'm using these paints today. 
So for the cottons, I squeeze the paint from the tubes into these wells and I allow them to harden. Then before each use, I mist them or add a couple drops of water from my brush. And I always use this white mixing area to not only get the colors I want, but also the consistency. Without mixing my paint with water before spreading on the paper, I'm finding it difficult to get the results that I'm used to. So I'm just gonna run through a few more tests as I share my thoughts. So when I bought my cake watercolor palette, I never used a mixing tray. Because it didn't come with a tray, I guess it just didn't occur to me to get one. Plus, I had 36 colors to choose from, so mixing colors didn't seem all that important to me at the time. I could usually find something close to what I wanted. This experience, dipping my brush directly into the paint, is showing me that a mixing tray is essential, in my opinion, no matter what type of watercolors you're using. So I'm really curious, for those of you who started with cake watercolors, did you use a mixing tray? Or, like me, did you paint straight from the cakes? Please let me know in the comments. I'm wondering if I'm the oddball who should have been using a mixing tray from day one, but didn't know any better. See how the green spreads out over the wet areas? I just love that part. Now that we've established the importance of the mixing tray, I'm going to pull mine out for a moment and compare how the two different paints mix. I'm grabbing two random colors. It looks like they're mixing quite well. I don't see any issues with the cakes or the cottons, so that's good news. Let's go ahead and wrap this up with some more side-by-sides. Cake is still on the left, Windsor and Newton on the right. If you look at the petals of these flowers, you can really see the blending of the yellow and green on the right, while the left still shows distinct lines down the petals. We were able to get a bit more of the blending here, so it's not too bad. Well, the left side really faded out on this one. I tried to get more saturated colors in this next example, especially on the left. So it is darker, but I find the transition of colors more appealing on the right side. With these pink petals, the left side once again failed to blend. Looking at these trees, I see a lot of separation between the yellow and the green on the left side. I dug through my box of practice paintings and I found these two mini landscapes. The left is from a while back when I was still using the cakes. The right is from just a few weeks ago using the Cotmans. It's clear that I was having some trouble blending on the left, mainly in the sky. It was a bit of a mess. But actually, the first thing I notice is the color. The left side feels too bright, almost cartoonish colors, while the right side is a little closer to shades we might see in nature. So whether or not you decide to start your watercolor journey with cakes, I highly recommend taking the time to prepare your colors and your consistencies in a mixing tray. Getting the right amount of water and paint will make a difference. I wish I had known that from the start. In conclusion, I do think the Windsor and Newton paints are well worth the price. If you feel like you're ready to upgrade from beginner level economy paints to the student grade, I think you'll be happy with this set, especially if you enjoy painting wet on wet. It could open a whole new world of blending and bleeding. At some point, I'm sure I'll try out professional grade watercolors, but for the time being, I'm satisfied with what I have, and I'm going to focus on bettering my technique before spending money on that next upgrade. But when that time does come, you know I'll have another video for you and more side-by-side -side comparisons that will hopefully make your own decisions a little easier when it comes to purchasing your next set of watercolor paints. Thanks for watching.